Forrest Raid was an Irish writer and close friend of E.M. Forster. He was born in 1875 in Belfast, the son of Feltworks manager Robert Raid and Francis Matilda Parr. He was educated at the Royal Belfast Academical Institution. In 1891 he began a five-year apprenticeship with Musgrave's tea merchants. His first novel, Kingdom of Twilight, came out in 1904. His dedication of his 1905 homoerotic The Garden God to Henry James made James stop all communication with him. In 1908 he got a BA in Medieval Modern Languages from Christ College, Cambridge. In 1913 he met and befriended Walter de la Mer. His 1944 young Tom won the James Tate Black Memorial Prize. He died in 1947 of peritonitis in Warren Point, County Down, Northern Ireland. We will review his 1911, The Bracknells, A Family Chronicle. Before we begin, I know Reed heavily revised it, and it was published after his death in 1947 as Dennis Bracknell. But I had access to the original, and its faults do not change even if the reworked version would be better. The novel begins with Hubert Rusk arriving in Belfast to tutor young Dennis Bracknell, the precocious son of the Bracknell family. Though he is 16, Dennis knows almost nothing but some things he has no use for and the indomitable domestic tyrant Mr. Brackner insists on the homeschooled, unschoolable Dennis getting a sound economical education. Rusk sees he must begin pretty much from scratch with the boy, slowly gaining his confidence. As he does so, he sees Mr. Brackner terrorizing his family, including blaming his wife for being ill, and sending his eldest son Alfred to the family business in Switzerland after he won't stop getting late for breakfast and playing cards. Soon Rusk is told about Dennis's actual literal moon worship, when he sneaks off to an old Celtic altar in the hedge in the middle of the night. He even follows him and sees him capering around one night fully nude, and is told he had offered sacrifice proper on the stone before. The family physician Dr. Birch then reveals to Rusk he planned for him to come to look after Dennis after a near-fatal incident some time ago, knowing that no one else but the doctor can convince the thick-skulled caveman that is Mr. Bracknell to do anything. Dennis becomes so attached to Rusk he will sometimes sleep in his room in a potentially somewhat uncomfortable sequence. But before we progress further, it is good to explain what takes up most of the novel. For it is hailed as being similar to James's Turn of the Screw, and it is very much not. Because that novel spent time building up the actual menace, not shoving it in the background for 85% of the book to deal with irrelevant side plots. We focus much on Amy Bracknell being in love with Rusk, one-sidedly, and being openly jealous of the slight attention he pays to her sister May. Then we focus on Alfred being a business failure, and on Mr. Bracknell having an illegitimate son. And yes, that never really matters for the plot at all. It takes to about page 236 for Dennis to reveal his story of a trip to a haunted house where a murder took place, and for us to find out that house is the current Bracknell house. Then when Alfred marries a typist from the office and embezzles funds to make do, his father tries to send him to the colonies but has a fit and dies, with Alfred decidedly not helping. This event is witnessed by Dennis in a dream. In the first instance of such an ability on his part, we have seen around page 250. After page 270, he starts seeing his father's ghost following him from place to place. So eight pages later, he kills himself. So that's all the tension we get there, then. 